this time. Stand on your feet. Give the Lord a hand. Praise. <laughs> you see, I'm preaching the word. Is that right? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. While you're standing, Father, we just thank you for this portion of the service. We thank you for what you have already done, even in Sunday school. Yes. Your presence has been here. Yes. We thank you that you're with us, Lord. Yes. We thank you. We don't take your presence lightly. And Father, I just pray that. Whatever you have by your spirit to be said, help us to have a hearing ear, yes. listening hearts, God. Yes. Father, in Jesus' name, that we would just increase more and more, more, and more. in grace, in the, in the spirit of wisdom, in the knowledge of who you are. Yes. Yes. We give you the glory. Yes. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, it's been a while. <laughs> you know, somebody pointed out that we have plenty of good ministers in the house. And I'm grateful for that. And how many grateful for that? Yeah. Yeah. God fearing house of God. Mm -hmm. Mother Tucker taught us well. <laughs> I'll tell you. Um, so I, you know, I'd be glad. I'm trying to, you know, let everybody have a chance. So, uh, well, it's been about three months, I think, since I've been here. <laughs> but you know what? I don't have nothing new. <laughs> I don't have anything new. Because the thing is, when we share, we still don't get everything, right? That's right. That's right. So, I mean, I have a lot of things in my spirit. But, you know, when you're up here, like, like Bishop Roy said, we don't have no notes. You can be up here all day. Uh -huh. And I'm trying to learn that. Because, you know, we can shoot from the hip. <laughs> I always got something to say. Amen? Yes, yes. The Bible said be ready, right? Mm -hmm. But you want to study because you want to be considerate of the people. That's right. You know, um, sometimes we got to be considerate. The people's attention span ain't that long. Mm -hmm. And after a while, <laughs> I told a story about the man who had a preacher and had a, a church in a barn. And, uh, and this Sunday, he, this particular Sunday, it stormed really bad. And only one person came out. And he had studied and was prepared for a really good message. And so he's, the, man, the man came out and he said, well, um, you know, I studied for you know, the, the message. He said, well, do you want to hear it? He said, well, if it was just one cow in the barn, he's, he deserves to eat. So he said, OK. Boy, he preached that whole sermon, mm -hmm. about two hours. And he asked the man, how did he enjoy it? The man said, well, if there was one cow in the barn, he, he needs to eat, but he don't have to eat the whole hay set stack, right? <laughs> so sometimes, just because we got all our notes don't mean we got to tell everything. Mm. <laughs> notes are, 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 are just a sign that we did our homework, right? We should be prepared, but then also just be led, right? Yes. Led by the Holy Spirit and know your audience. Amen. <laughs> Somebody said, know your audience. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit, guys, we just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So that's my endeavor today. Praise Trying to learn as we on this journey, right? <laughs> you know, if you never get up, you never try stuff. If you're too scared to try, you'll never grow. If you're just scared you never fail, you'll never grow. Because being human, mistakes are inevitable. And, and mistakes keep us humble. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Mistakes keep us humble. You know, you know, so we need to remember that. Don't be afraid to try. Because I don't want to grow. Because I'm going to tell you, it ain't. It ain't, ain't no such thing as staying still too long. If you stay still too long, you're going backwards. Yes. And I don't want to go backwards. No, no, no. Right? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, so I said ain't nothing new. Praise the Lord. So guess what? We're going to go back over 
This is my sermon in the pocket. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a back pocket. In my yeah. purse. Yeah. We're going to go over first, second Peter, the first chapter. Is that what it is? All right, so I have passed these out times in the past, and I know probably y'all don't have them who, had, who was here. How many remember me sharing on this before? Okay, I, and so I, this doesn't go out to the little babies, but I think I got enough to pass out to everybody. Um, Brother Rock, could you pass this out? Pass this out for me. Amen. So we're gonna t we're gonna talk about uh, Christian growth. Yeah. This is a passage. I'm just gonna get right into it. Second Peter five, one one Second Peter the first chapter. How your Bible. You know the books of the Bible. <laughs> All right. Amen. I'm going to read the first chapter. First verse, I'm reading to the 12th. I'm reading King James Version. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The fifth verse says, And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the, the rather brethren, give diligence to make, to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly and to the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the 12th verse says, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. He said, Yea, 13 says, Yea, I think it, it's me, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Amen? Amen. All right. So everybody got a paper? Everyone mm -hmm. and, and, and the young people who are able to comprehend, if it's any more. All right. All right. So this is something I've been sharing for a while. Some of you haven't heard it, so it's good. This is called, this is uh, what you see is um, what Peter's talking about, and I call it the hierarchy needs for Christian growth. So hierarchy means um, order. 
these are the, this is the order of how we grow in our faith. Amen? Yeah. So this, this order is very important because if you try to skip a step, you're deceiving yourself. We're not growing. Right? So uh, what I've noticed um, back in the day, <laughs> when I say the day, in the 80s when the faith, faith movement started out real strong, a lot of people were really excited about faith and getting people saved. So if you look on your paper, faith is at the bottom, and we're going from the bottom up. What, what, what was happening is people were getting saved, then they were trying to win people to Christ, but they were skipping all the character building blocks in the middle. So you had a lot of people, you had churches full of people and faith and, I mean, prosperity. Now when I say prosperity, I'm talking about houses, cars, and everything, but no character. So they're taking each other's, getting divorced, taking each other's wives and husbands and divorcing and and all this stuff. There's no moral character being built because you gotta you gotta study this stuff, right? Yes. We have to be serious about presenting our bodies a living sacrifice. Amen. Right? Yes. So you don't go from faith to trying to win your world at that quick. You go from faith to building uh virtue. Yes. Building, knowing God better. Mm -hmm. Understanding how God thinks. Yes. The character of God. And then as we know God better, then he's going to actually, you know, we have, some of us have a problem with um, resisting sin, mm -hmm. temptation, because we don't really understand the will of God for our lives. Amen. Yeah. I mean, what's the point in saying no if you don't, have a, if you don't know where you're going? You, you know, you say no to sin because you're trying to get somewhere. Yes. You, try, you got somewhere you're trying to go. And if you don't have a vision for your life, you have no reason to resist sin. You don't even have strength to resist. All you know is what you should not be doing. You know what you shouldn't be doing, but you still do it. But why is that? Because you have no vision. You got to have vision, right? To go forward. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So that's what we just going to, you know, I don't know. I've been over this so much. I think I'm going to get to the point where I just talk about it. Um, so our faith, our, our Christian walk starts with faith in believing in the Lord Jesus that he is the way to the Father God, right? Yeah. God so loved the word he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in Jesus shall not perish but have everlasting life, right? Yeah. So he's the reason why we are restored back to fellowship with the Heavenly Father. And you know, and that's that's something that's been bothering me too a lot. It's like, come on, y'all, we gotta know how to respect the Godhead, yes. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yes. We we need to understand the operation of the three. Because I come, I see some movements. You know, there's no acknowledgement of of. of you know. I mean, I don't know. I think I think our Heavenly Father's movements. It, it's just Jesus. Jesus is the Father. Jesus is everything. But I don't really, in, in what I perceive of that, I don't, I don't see that that grieves the Father because they're acknowledging his son. But I think it's really important that we acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. and give him his rightful place. Amen? Amen? He's the head of the church. Amen? Amen? We can't have a relationship with the Heavenly Father except through him. Right. And it's not like this is Jesus and I sure thank you for it. Doing that for me now, I'm over here on my own, and it's just me and the Father. No, our relationship is with the Father through the Son. Stay connecting with the Lord Jesus, and that's how you stay connected. Stay connected with the Father, God. He is the true vine. He's the lifeline. Right? Amen. Amen. And we gotta we gotta respect that order. Hallelujah. My strength is when I'm telling you when I acknowledge God. I gotta have strength in this thing, right? And when I acknowledge my strength is in the Lord Jesus, he said, he told Paul, he said, in your weakness, my strength is perfect. Didn't he say that? My strength is perfect in you, right? Hallelujah. So we're gonna start here 
Oh my God, I'm not, I'm, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about this. I go through all these scriptures and everybody's going to sleep. <laughs> I'm not trying to make you go to sleep. <laughs> Amen. But after you get saved, we need to have a mind to live right. We need to make up our mind, oh, Lord, I want to do your will. Y'all heard that song, my mind made up. That's an old song. No turning back. Yes, I'm happy because I'm on the right track. <laughs> when you make up your mind, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do your will. I want to do your will. And we say, as we always say, yes, Lord, right? I'm saying yes because I'm, I'm willing. And when we're willing, God, he'll make a way out of no way. <laughs> He will make a way for us to do this thing, to live this like we need to, right? Yeah. So, so when you get saved, you got to make your mind, Lord, I'm ready to live right. I'm ready to clean up my life. Yes. We got to walk in truth. Yes. You know, and, and I, you know, something that's coming to my mind, I'm sure real quick. It was this woman who, for whatever reason, she got confused in her sexual identity. And she was living a lifestyle as a man. But she was still in the church. And um, so she was, um, you know, volunteering. And she wanted to be a part of church and all that. But she was um, really was confused about her identity. So um, she was there at this church. And, uh, and word got out about her lifestyle. And the pastor called her in. Now, this is a true story. And um, she said, the pastor said, okay, what's this I'm hearing about you? <laughs> what's going on with you? And um, she said, well, I, I uh, was a woman, but now I'm a man. And, uh, and the pastor didn't know how to handle that. So he told her he thinks she needs to move on, go somewhere else. So she left there mm -hmm. and Went to another town, city or state, got involved in another church as a man. But this particular pastor there, she got uh, involved in the men's groups and all that stuff. And uh, but she grew up, she be, uh, had developed a really close relationship with the father, with the pastor, like a father figure. And so, but word got out, and she'd actually met some woman, and she was, you know, as a man, she, and she was gonna engage this person but the word got out at this church and so the pastor called her in and said told her we need to talk and uh, when, when she went before this pastor the pastor asked basically what's going on but she said she didn't really know why but she said she spoke the truth and she said I'm a woman living as a man Whereas the other pastor, she told him, I was a woman, but I'm a man now. But this time she said, I'm a woman living as a man. And she said, when that happened, that was the truth. And she's like, the spirit of truth, like the Holy Spirit just came in. And her eyes just began to be open to her state that she was in. And she said, man, I gotta get myself together. It's like, I gotta break off this relationship and and the pastor's like, well, what, what do you want to do? She sees like, I gotta get, I gotta get myself together. He said, Well, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the reason that she was able to open up and be honest because she felt that that person really loved her, that pastor loved her. Yeah. And that's the thing that the world is looking for is love yeah. and acceptance. Amen. Amen. And I don't know why I brought that up. I brought that up for a reason. But we got to walk in truth. I think that's what I'm talking about. Yes. We've got to be honest with our conditions, yes. where we are, right? Yes. And, and the Holy Spirit. But, I, but I, I, you know, I want to bring out on that other side of that. God, we need to be representatives of God's love yes. Yes. to people. Amen. You know? Amen. I'm coming in contact with some interesting things, and, and some people are very precious. They, their lifestyle is questionable, but... Everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a story. 
And I, and I think it's important to hear everybody's story and let everybody, everybody needs to feel like they're being heard. Because you don't know where their pain started. You don't know. It's a reason for everything. And so we need to stand for, for the kingdom of God, righteousness, peace, and joy, and all that. But we need to, people need to feel love, right? Yes. You know, how many know he draws us by his love yes. and his kindness? So that was a powerful testimony to me that that environment that was created, um, her and that pastor caused her to be able to come to grips with herself, to be honest with where she, where she really was, and she got free. Amen? Amen. She got free. So you gotta wanna, you gotta want truth. You gotta love truth. If you don't love truth, you're gonna be deceived and you're gonna deceive others and you're gonna find a way to keep the deception going if you don't love truth. Right? right? Yeah. Sometimes the truth hurts. Yeah. I, I've always thought declared, I said, Lord, I want I want to love truth even if it hurts. I mean, most of the time it does. Yeah. <laughs> but the truth makes us free, right? So when we embrace, um, we, how many got your Bibles open? Yeah. Got your Bibles open? Okay. So let's go down here. Oh, my God. This is so rich. This whole, what I just read, is so rich. Peter said in the third chapter, he said, third verse, he said, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. He said, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these we might partake, be partakers of the divine nature, and having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. The promises are given to us to counteract the lust that's in this world. You hear what I'm saying? It's important for us to embrace God's promises that empowers us to resist the lust yes, yes. that's in this world. Amen. Right? Amen. So he said he's given all, this prom all these promises to us. Everything we need. He's already, this part from verse 1 to 4, Peter is just pretty much laying down the fact that, look, God has already done his part. Yes. How many know we have to work with God? You know, we, we don't like to work. We want everything to be given to us. And, you know, but how I many you know you appreciate stuff when you get your part? Do your part, right? The fifth verse says, but be, and besides this, giving all diligence and carefulness, add to your faith. So in other words, he's, he's saying, look, God has already set us up. Now this is your part. This is our part. Fifth verse says, add to your faith. Virtue, that's right living, okay? God ain't going to live right for you. Amen? Amen? We have to consciously think, Lord, I mean, be aware. The devil's trying to trip us up in our lifestyle. How many want to be a vessel of honor? Amen. we got to realize a lot of deception in, this, in the faith. Some people think just because God is using them that they are right. But God will use, God will use anything he wants to. You can't tell God what to use and not use. Because you don't know the person that he's, he might be using a dirty vessel to get a message to somebody whose heart is in the right place. Amen? Amen. Amen. When your heart is in the right place, any, you can get a message out of anything. Yes. <laughs> You get a message from a uh, uh, somebody ain't even other faith. Yes. You get a message from anything or anybody when when our hearts are open to the, yes. to the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 All right. So when we make up our mind to live right, I'm just going over this again. Then we posture ourselves to get to know God better. We, we posture ourselves to get to know God's character. More than anything, I want to know his ways. I want to know how he works. 
The Bible says he, he, he showed the children of Israel his acts, but he showed Moses his ways. He showed Moses the why behind what was done. Right? I want to know him. I don't want to just see miracles. I don't want to see miracles. We need to, we need to see miracles. But I don't, I don't want to be motivated just by that. And I, there are some powerful generals in the past that worked miracles because they had the gifts. Yeah. But their lifestyles were some of them, some of them, not, not all of them. Amen. And some of the ones I studied in Bible school, most of them weren't. Mm -hmm. Didn't have too much to get. <laughs> some of them were alcoholics and gluttons, yeah. but anointed. You know? You know what I mean? Some have a reputation of just kind of just being messy. Yeah. So I don't want to, just because a person got a gift don't mean that they're, this is on purpose. Amen. The gift is a gift. Yes. You got to understand, a gift is a gift. Yes. You know? Amen. Baby, if I gave you this, if I gave you this pen, if I gave it to you, what do you say? Thank you. It's a gift. Now, if I'm selling it, ten dollars, but it's not a gift thing, right? right? So we we think we have to earn gifts. That's an oxymoron. A gift is a gift. Some people, you know, get a lot of. I mean, I'm not trying to. I mean, I want. Look, we need gifts. Amen. How many want to be used by God? Gifts are tools. To build the kingdom of God, right? Amen. So I'm not speaking against gifts, but I mean, we need to understand when something is a gift, when God gives it as a gift. So the Bible says Jesus ascended up on high, and he gave gifts unto men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the body, you know, the, the building up of the body, and, and until we all come into you, one day I'm going to learn how to quote that. I'm going to feel real spiritual. When I quote that Ephesians 4, 4 is that 420? <laughs> but they, the gifts are given to build the kingdom, right? Yeah. Then there's, and so, but there's some things when it comes to character, we got to, that's, everybody said that's a work. It's an uphill journey. Now, it ain't supposed to be um, unbearable, but it's got to be, by determination, yeah. right? On purpose, mm -hmm. on purpose, right? Yeah. And there's one brother kept falling into fornication and other things. Well, God put that, why he let that temptation come? Why don't you learn to resist it? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so it makes me wonder, what kind of vision do you have for your walk in Christ? Mm -hmm. Do you have one? Where are you trying to go? Where do you feel like God is trying to take you? Are right, we seeking God? And what are, you, what are you doing, Lord? What do you want to do with my life? What do I mean? What are your desires? Right? Yeah. All right. So, embracing moral excellence, uh, virtue, holy living. Everybody say holy living. Holy living. Holy living is just right living. Right? Yeah. Then we posture ourselves to have a visitation from the from our Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. To teach us of the character of God. Mm -hmm. Knowing God better, when we understand God's character, um, uh, yeah, when we understand God's character, it, will, it actually empowers us to be able to say no yeah. when we need to. Everybody said no. Everybody said this with me. Self-control yeah. Self is being able to say no when I need to. If we know how to say no when we need to, the yes is going to be automatic. Does that make sense? All right. So, self-control is temperance that only comes when we get to know God's will for our lives. Yeah. <coughs> the more we get to know God's will for our lives, the more strength we'll have to walk in self-control. Does that make sense? Amen. 
Are you looking at your paper? Okay, so I'm just gonna go by this paper since everybody got one. And I'm not gonna be up here long. Self-control, oh, that, yes, sir. Self-control, being able to say no when you need to, understand the steps. We won't be able to be empowered with that until we understand God's will better for our lives. We won't be able to understand God's will better for our lives if we don't make, a, make our minds up to walk holy or moral excellence or just live right. Amen? Amen. So the more we purpose to live right, God is going to reveal more of his character to us, right? Amen. All right, and, and self-control will produce, what's the next level up? Patient endurance. Patient endurance means don't give up. Mm -hmm. Stick to it, stick to it to this. Yes. Self-control will produce patient endurance. Patient endurance has to do with you holding on until your change comes. Hold on until your change comes. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Patient endurance has to do with vision. Everything has to do with vision. You got to believe. Amen? You believe this is not going to be like this always. Amen. This is a season. Everybody said this is a season. Amen. Amen. It's not going to be this way always. And really, that's good. That's good. Life is full of seasons. Yeah. You know? There's seasons sometimes, it's just trials and tribulations. Uh -huh. Passing down in bags, and, and, and it rained so hard, the ceiling fell in. And uh, Brother Martin Lane, he was helping me. And it was there Sunday morning. <laughs> and it, it was just a hole. It was just a hole. And I walked in, he had already cleaned up most of it. He was sitting, he was kind of sitting like Brother Rod. When I came in, he was sitting there like that. He said, Trials and tribulations come and make you strong. <laughs> <laughs> he was just locked in, you know. He was like, Trials and tribulations come and make you strong. And I'm like, man, you know, so he, he was just ready for the long haul. <laughs> but it's just sometimes it's just a season of trials. Yeah. Like, God, help me hold out. <laughs> And when we get to complaining so much, all it does is, ooh, it is complaining just. When somebody said you complain, you remain. And if we if we if we learn that, like I'm trying to get this better, I'm trying to get better at this. Okay, this is this is something that I normally be fussing. But uh, I'm trying to just have a song in my heart now. <laughs> Sing a little bit. Song sings in a song. Yeah. <laughs> Sing along. So this morning I was singing about the mercies of God and uh this song this came up in my spirit real strong. I will sing of your love forever. Anybody know that? Yes. I will sing of your love forever. For your mercies are new every morning. I'm just singing. I will sing of your, and I had to get on the keyboard a little bit. I will sing of your love. It's a good thing to think about the mercies and the love of God, right? Especially in the morning time. So I'm trying to learn to sing. Get a little hum. This is when I was at work, this lady works in the dining room. And she just hums all the time. She just keeps a hum going. And I said, you, you just keep a melody in your heart, don't you? How many know the scripture tells us? To, to, to have a, teach one another the songs, hymns, spiritual songs, keeping the melody in your heart to the Lord. And so that humming and that singing is helping me to endure. Kind of put a little grace in there. <laughs> like, and really, it's not going to be this way always. Right? But if we complain, we remain. And so we keep going around the same stuff. I didn't, my God, I have wasted a lot of time. Complaining, my God. Have mercy on me, Lord. So patient endurance, don't give up. It's gonna change. In due time, right? And the more and the quicker we keep get our attitude together, the quicker the change will come. Amen? For us. Everybody said for me. For me. So this 
changed you. Your whole perspective. Sometimes that's what we need. So patient endure, what's the next step? Oh. Patient endurance will produce godliness. The mind of Christ. And I, and I say this is really our goal. Because if we can reach, if we can walk in godliness, and I, I was actually going to teach, uh, share on Psalms 1. Blessed is a man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Uh, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. So, godliness is the opposite of ungodliness, right? Amen. And you have to really watch, I'm just saying this, you have to watch ungodly counsel. Yes. Counsel that will take you away from the path, from the righteous path, right? Amen. And it's a, it's a lot of people giving counsel, but not according to the word. Amen. And we have to Understand the principles of a word because you can make the Bible say anything you want yeah, to. That's right. That's right. right? Yeah. So, so Proverbs says wisdom is the principal thing, right? Yeah. And get wisdom with all you're getting, get understanding. So, godliness will, is going to, it's, godliness is an, a growing and increasing in the awareness of God's presence yeah. with you, in you. To do a work through you. Right? Amen. How many know you have the Spirit of God within you? Amen. And, and growing it, it's like we'd be like, well, Lord, we need you to come. We gotta recognize He never leaves us. <laughs> so we need to create an atmosphere where we increase in the awareness of His presence. Amen. That's in us, with us, and to work through us. Amen? Amen. Because when we, when we realize that God is not just with me, but, but his spirit, the spirit of Christ is in me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's who we live. We live out of that place. In Christ. And so then when, and if I'm walking like that, with that mindset, the mind of Christ, you see that under there it says the mind of Christ? Mm -hmm. We walk in like that, then that, that empowers us to be a blessing wherever we go. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Just a little bit, y'all. Try to try to find a reason to put put God on somebody's mind wherever you go. Amen. Sometimes I just try to say, God bless you. And people be shocked when you say God bless you. Amen. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, you know, I learned to appreciate that more when it, somebody, you know, somebody holds a sign or sometimes I give them something and say, God bless you. I, I learned to receive that blessing. Yeah, God bless you. I receive that. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, so just find a reason. If you can, if you have a little door, put God on somebody's mind. Amen. Amen. All right. So then as we walk with this mindset that I am an ambassador, if I say I am an ambassador of Christ, if you're born again, right? Yes. We represent him in this earth. Yes. That's what empowers us to love one another. You see the next step? Then it's something, the next step is love of one another, right? Yes. Not the world. So again, we have too many people that want to win the world, we can't even get along in the house. We trying to win our world, right? But how many? Everybody says an order. There is an order in the house of God. There is an order in the faith. Jesus said they'll know that you're my disciples by your what? Love for one another. Love for the world. You're like Elder Rodney. Love for the world. Love for one another. Love for one another. I can always tell when I'm lacking, when I'm low, you know when your car is low on oil. I try to listen to my engine. Because I don't want to burn my engine up, right? And then some people be like, oh, I gotta get a new engine. Okay, what happened before that? Right. <laughs> right. What did you 
Did you ignore the signs? You pushing your car, this is just, and you pushing it anyway, and you're not getting your oil changed. And somebody came to the ministry, and they wanted, they needed nine hundred dollars to get in the oil uh, engine. I said, what, what happened to your engine? Why? I mean, how did that happen? And I looked at them, they didn't say nothing. I said, you didn't change your oil, did you? <laughs> no. Why didn't you change your oil? Well, I didn't have the money. I said, oh, but you come and ask for $900, you can't ask for 50 Right. And did your oil change? Man. You couldn't own yourself and just ask for 50 to, to avoid what they said, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Right. But you bold enough to come and ask for $900 to get a new engine. Wow. Huh. But you could have prevented this if you just asked for $50 to get your oil changed. Right. Every three months you get your oil changed. If you need to come and ask for $50, we'd be so proud of you. <laughs> So I try to, you know, this love walk. Uh, Sometimes my oil gets a little low. And, and, and not with everybody, just certain people. I mean, I, I ain't the only one. Come on now. Be real. Be real. Let's be real. And so, this is what I know about love. My mother used to talk about this. When you love someone, when you're walking in love with that person, you look for ways to cover their sins. You, you, you look for ways to cover their problems. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you make an excuse. Well, sometimes you do. Sometimes you do. You can tell when somebody just, you know, they, 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 don't, they don't want to look at their problems. But then when you don't care too much about a person, you're trying to find fault and criticize them. But how many know that's not love? Right? So I, I try to check myself with this. Well, why are you you're so ready to expose this person? Yeah. <laughs> you know, my mother used to say, "How's your love life?" Mm -hmm. And and you know, when I talk about the when I talk about Psalms ninety one, I talk about I bring out the point that love is a geographical location. We have to walk in love, yeah. and you can get out of love, mm -hmm. and you have to know the signs when you got out of love. And repent and get back in love. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, you know, if you, you say, well, that wasn't love, well, okay. Let's just repent and get back in love. Right. And cover one another, pray for one another, yeah. deal with one another. Sometimes love will cause you to take courage to go and confront in love. Everybody say in love. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't never had a problem confronting. But I have made it, I have, I have to make adjustments to confronting love. Yes. And, and so when you're confronting in love, you are confronting wanting to build the person up. Yes. Not to push them down, right? Yes. So that's our love art. So that's a little bit of that. Um, brotherly kindness comes after godliness. Let's understand this. We cannot walk in Christian love, if we're not walking in godliness. Amen. You can't walk in Christian love if you don't walk in the mind of Christ. If you don't walk in the awareness that Christ is in us, with us, to work through us. My nephew had a, a, um, a little picture on his door that said, I know I'm somebody. Look like a little boy that got in some trouble. <laughs> a little drawing. He was like going inside his bed looking pitiful. He said, I know I'm somebody because God don't make no junk. But then how many know the scripture tells us he put his treasures in these earthly vessels? Right? So we're to walk around wanting to heal, right? We don't need to be a part of the problem. <laughs> you know, I got that's something I've been saying, I've been speaking this and thinking this way. I want to be more of an asset in life and less of a liability. Right? Yeah. Because this is the thing, we need each other. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we need to be able to bear our own burdens. And what I mean by that is pay your own bills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Somebody shouldn't have to be doing that for you all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. But if we need help, we should be there for one another, right? Yeah. Yeah. So dependence is for children. Independence is for adults, right? Mm -hmm. 
but that shouldn't even be taken out of, you can be so independent that you feel like you don't need nobody. Mm -hmm. But I believe that, that God wants us to be interdependent. Mm -hmm. Be here for each other. Yeah. Be, you know, just, just be, just do what you can. But and that's that's something I have to learn. It's like I have to really get an understanding of what I'm really able to do, because I can. Um, you know, I used to give so much that you with no wisdom. You ever heard that saying? They say give until it hurts. I, I gave until I put myself in intensive care. You hurt myself, not using wisdom, right? So you gotta you gotta know how to take care of your business. And so you can be in a position to help somebody else if they need help. Amen. Right? Amen. So and I'm talking about the church right now. We need to be here for each other. Amen. Amen. And I'm trying to really, I'm asking the Lord, Lord, help me to find that place of contentment. You know, what is, what is, what is it that I need in my life so I can just be content? Now, contentment and settling is two different things. <laughs> Right? Paul told, was that someone who was in, in prison, he said, or slave, he said, if you, uh, you know, obey your master and all that, and he said, if you have a chance to get your liberty, take it. If you have a chance, take it. So we need, opportunities come to us to become better. We need to understand that um, there are good opportunities and ask God to help us to know when to go through those doors, amen? amen? But in the meantime, we need to be content, be at peace where we are and be thankful, right? Amen. And that's what I've just been praying for because um, sometimes things can happen in life and you don't know, you know, sometimes you're dealing with hurt and disappointment. And if you don't deal with disappointment in the right way, it, it can just really cause you to make some really not wise decisions. Yes. <laughs> Choices. So we want to be healed, right? Yes. We want to make decisions from a healed place. Yes. You know, we have to remember the Lord Jesus is coming. And his coming is quick. Yes. When he comes. And we don't need to be caught up in the lust of this world, the pride of life, the lust of the eye, the, the lust of the flesh. Right? Amen. Amen. Because we can't take none of this stuff with us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So, the next level, brotherly kindness, what is the peak level? Love for the world. I like to say love for our world. For our world. Now, I believe, and, and uh, Peter said, if we follow this, He said, the 8th verse says, the first, now y'all with me? 8th verse says, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he that lacketh these things, what things is he talking about? He's talking about this list. He said, he that lacketh these things is blind. And cannot see afar off. So, so if you like my glasses, I, I get confused about this. Now, if you need glasses to see far off, what are you nearsighted? Are you nearsighted? Yes. Okay. So then he's saying you're nearsighted if you can't. <laughs> if these things are not abounding us, we're nearsighted spiritually, right? So when we when we when we give heed and take heed to these things. It causes us to be able to see clear in front of us. Amen? Yes. Amen. All right. So then he said, Wherefore, the rather, the tenth verse, brethren, give diligence. How many know what diligence means? Be careful. Do it, if you do it intentionally on purpose, right? Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. But if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
Let us stop. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your love. Lord, I just pray that uh, just sharing this again and some um, hearing it from from my point of view or from, from my angle for the first time, but Lord, I just pray that Holy Spirit, just take the truth of your word, Lord, and let it penetrate in our hearts and in our minds. Help us not to take your word lightly. Your instructions of your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I gave these sheets out to, so that they can be studied and look at it and go over the scriptures yourself so that we can grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want y'all to pray with me. Just, just pray and give thanks. Open your mouths. Just pray with me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you, Holy One. Thank you for your holiness. Thank you for your power and your grace. Thank you for increasing us, Lord, more and more. In the fruit of your holiness, Lord. In your righteousness, your peace. Joy in your holiness, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord, that we'll grow. That we'll have a hunger to grow more and more, Lord. That the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ will penetrate in every part. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That the evidence of you living in us and through us, Lord, that it would just be evidence. God, and if we would be convicted for it, Lord, that we would be put in prison because there's so much evidence yes. of who we belong to. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. you bring us back. Bring us back. Hallelujah. Lord, the withdrawal that would be that light that you call us to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the gifts that are in the body of Christ, Lord, that you have given us. Everything that we need that pertains, that pertains to life and godliness in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, that you've given us these exceedingly great and precious promises so that by these Lord, we might escape the corruption that's in this world that comes through lust, Lord. The lust of the eye and the pride of life in the lust of the flesh, God, in the name of Jesus. God, just help us, Lord. Help us, Heavenly Father. Help us to walk humbly before you, Lord. Help us to love mercy and to do justly, Lord. Jesus, let your character be built within us, Lord. Help us to know you better, Lord. Hallelujah. Help us to walk in self-control and patient endurance, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, in godliness. That the mind of Christ will be exalted in us, Lord. It will cause us to be of one spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory unto your name. Thank you, Lord. And that we will be able to love one another like we're supposed to, Lord. Because we're full of grace, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We'll, we will win our world without even trying, God, because we love one another. And they'll come in. People will be drawn to the light of your love. Okay? Help us to look for ways to encourage one another. If we see a need, help us to just find a way to just show love to each other, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. By faith, we walk this thing out. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Teach us how to live sacrificially, Lord. Hallelujah. But not to the degree that we hurt ourselves, but God, but we can give sacrificially. Hallelujah. Without hurting ourselves. Just going out of our way to do something. That's sacrifice. Thank you, Father. God. That is everything don't have to be convenient. 
No, I'll, I'll do it if it's, if it's convenient. That's not love. That's not necessarily love. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes the Lord showed me there's a difference between being nice and being kind. Kindness is a fruit of the Spirit. People know how to be nice. Since you can be nice and not go out of your way and do nothing. Right? But everybody should be nice. Not everybody is kind. Because kindness is a fruit of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Kindness will cause us to, to just go out our way. And I see the kindness of God in a lot of God. <laughs> I see the love of God. And I wonder how many want to increase. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. I'm going to get on the keyboard and I'm going to ask the elders to come up. And I want anybody, you know, we're here. This is a sanctuary. This is a place for you to come before. I mean, this, not every church offers prayer. People will get healed if you come by faith. Whatever you need. The altar is open. In Jesus' name. Don't leave here heavy. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. God cares. He cares about everything that's concerning us. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody has elder, elder, uh, Pastor Dad. If you don't mind that, Elder uh, Apollos, Elder Rodney, come up. In the name of Jesus. Listen, whatever you need, if you believe, all things are possible. For those who believe. Amen. God, give us hearts and minds to be obedient, be sensitive to your spirit. Yes. Jesus.
brothers up. Amen. I told him to 